assistance, including the Deputy Prime Minister Moses Ali, uh, of course, against Benjamin Netanyahu's visit, clearly saying that it was an attack on the territorial integrity of Uganda back then. But Netanyahu comes to commemorate 40 years since the raid at Entebbe National Airport. And, of course, we saw um, air, air, aircraft landing at Entebbe and uh, Israeli people rescued who were, of course, hostages and then taken back home. But I think, Yvonne, as we speak right now, Benjamin Netanyahu has just touched down at the Entebbe International Airport. Of course, we had his advance team arriving earlier on. Uh, the guard of honor from both countries getting ready to welcome him. Of course, different diplomats and uh, dignitaries from Uganda will be welcoming Benjamin Netanyahu in Entebbe. And he also will not be coming to Kampala so he'll, for the better part of the day. He will be in Entebbe. Later on, he's expected to go and meet different heads of state, seven heads of state from across the region at the state house in Entebbe. Of course, we know that uh, Kenya's president, Uhuru Kenyatta, will be here. Uh, Paul Kagame is also in the country. Of course, Tanzania's president, John Pombe Magufuli, is here. South Sudan's president, uh, Salva Kiel Mayadit, is also going to be here. Ethiopian prime minister, among others, and very much more. Uh, a lot of issues are expected to be discussed between the heads of state, Yvonne. A little bit about his stay there because it's set to be there for just a short while. But we just want to remind you that the pictures you were seeing on your screen just a moment ago is believed to be the plane carrying uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu, the first uh, Prime Minister in the last 29 years to touch down on the African continent. That plane you see on your screen is courtesy of our sister station in Uganda, NBS. And Solomon Serwanja is still with us, just talking to us about the significance of this. So, um, you know, it is interesting, uh, Solomon, that... Um, uh, you know, he'll be in uh, Uganda for just a day because he's scheduled to come to Kenya for four days. Um, you know, what is expected to be discussed between him and the seven heads of state uh, later this afternoon? Well, you and I even know that the foreign policy of Israel stands very strong against terrorism. And so uh, is Kenya, Uganda, and S Somalia, and Ethiopia, and the region at large. So top on agenda for the discussion is expected to be uh, the issues on terrorism. How can the region tap from the Israeli supremacy to fight terrorism in the region? But also we know that Netanyahu comes to uh, Uganda not only to celebrate the raid at Entebbe International Airport, but also to speak for African allies. Even you and I know that um, Israelis have always lost the debate when it comes to the UN General Assembly and to the Security Council because the Arab world often votes against its policies. So we know that the Arabs always vote as a bloc, and so they always vote against Israel. But also when you look at the European Union, which is also very much interested in issues of human rights, they have vehemently spoken about Israelis breaking, uh, you know, the, the laws and the rules and infringing of human rights. So they also don't have a lot of support in the European Union. So then what do you do? Then you look at Africa as, as a better ally. So I think also uh, Benjamin Netanyahu comes to cement that broken relationship that Africa had with, um, with, with Israel. I mean, you think about it. Uganda doesn't have an embassy of Israel uh, in Uganda. We only have that in Kenya. So it really speaks about the sour relationship that Uganda has had uh, with Israel. So Benjamin Netanyahu's visit to Uganda and indeed to the region is also aimed at cementing that relationship uh, between Uganda but also between other African heads of state. But Yvonne, also, I think one of the things that these African leaders are going to be discussing in the evening of today is the issue of military intelligence. How can they share military intelligence with Israel? Yvonne, you know very well that Israel is one of the superpowers in the world and we know them for their military military might in terms of military intelligence and military equipment and weapons. So it is expected that the region, uh, the regional heads of state uh, will be discussing how they can benefit from Israel in terms of military assistance or military intelligence, but even much more on how they can share this intelligence in the fight against terrorism.
Mm, thanks very much for that, Solomon Serwanja, on the significance of this trip by Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu. That plane you see there um, is believed to be the one carrying the Prime Minister, and uh, we'll be letting you know about uh, that meeting that he's said to have with seven heads of state later, including our very own President Uhuru Kenyatta, after which he will be coming to Kenya, and he should be here for about three days. So this is uh, the first trip by an Israeli Prime Minister to Africa in the last 29 years looking for allies the war on terror no doubt will be top on the agenda uh, for the Israeli Prime Minister and Kenya and indeed um, the other countries in the region something of course uh, that is a headache not just uh, in East Africa but across the world as well we've seen the attacks in Dhaka we've seen the attacks uh, in Brussels and in Iraq as that continues the threat of ISIS Al-Shabaab and other terror groups including Boko Haram around the country will continue to give you live pictures so stay with us here on ktn news the minute prime minister benjamin netanyahu touches down in Entebbe, the minute he steps on african soil we will definitely be bringing you those pictures live here on ktn news desk let's uh, come back home now to other top stories of the day cherengani legislator wesley career wants the government to immediately rein in on May's cartels hoarding maize to create an artificial shortage in the country. The MP argues that this would lead to a shoot in the flour prices. Korea said the government has budgeted 1.6 billion shillings to buy maize, and if urgent measures are not taken, the funds would end up in traders' pockets at the expense of maize farmers. <laughs> Hiyo ni njia ya watu kutaka kutumia ile mabilioni moja nukta sita ambaye tumeweka kwa bajeti ya kununua mahindi mwaka huu. Atutaki hiyo pesa itoke hiyo excellency. Mahindi iko nyingi kwa Sirion, watoe mahindi ya Sirion ifanye kazi ili wanacherengani na watu wa Rift Valley watakapofuna mahindi yao, pesa hiko ya kununulia mahindi. Na iko mali ya kuweka mahindi. Okay, so we want to bring you those pictures live. We apologize for cutting off MP Wesley Korir there, but this is because uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu now landed at Entebbe Airport, and you can see the live pictures on your screen. President Yoweri Kaguta Museveni and the First Lady um, on hand to receive him there. He uh, will be doing a tour of a number of countries in the region, um, and he will be in Entebbe. He will not be going into Kampala, but we understand there will be a meeting with seven heads of state in the region, among them President Magufuli, President Kagame, um, President of South Sudan, Salva Kiir, uh, the Ethiopian Prime Minister Haile Mariam Dessalen, as well as President Uhuru Kenyatta, among others, will be at that meeting uh, seeking allies, the war on terror, uh, business uh, ties, uh, that's what it's being touted as, but of course we know there will be a lot more on the table there and so that is him touching down this comes significantly 40 years after that in Raid, we understand Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu lost his elder brother in that attack um, and of course that is a significant time for him to arrive in Entebbe will be there just for a day after which he's expected to touch down at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport here in Nairobi later on this evening he's expected to spend a couple of days uh, here in Kenya for that so this of course our pictures coming to you live Live right here on KTN News, courtesy of NBS, which is our sister station in Uganda. So um, we're bringing these pictures to you of this uh, great historic visit by the Prime Minister, who should be uh, touching down any moment now, currently in Uganda. historic visit to Africa. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu will be in Africa for a five-day visit, the first by a sitting Prime Minister of Israel on the continent in 29 years. 
He will attend that ceremony marking 40 years since the Entebbe raid. He will meet leaders from seven states and he will visit four countries in five days. Next on his stop is Nairobi, Kenya. He will be here for about three days. And of course, uh, business is on his mind, but no doubt to strengthen the relationship between um, his country and many parts in the region with the war on terror. Remember, Israel is a country um, that is surrounded by um, quite a number of countries that are experiencing um, you know, a bit of terror attacks in the region and being a superpower in the world, exercising military might, sometimes getting accused of human rights atrocities. This is definitely something that we will be watching and indeed uh, what will be the outcome of the talks. The first sitting Prime Minister to visit Sub-Saharan Africa since Yitzhak Shamir. And he visited um, four West African countries back in 1987. Netanyahu coming here 29 years later. Of course, um, he will also be there at uh, a ceremony to mark 40 years since the Entebbe raid. And uh, that ceremony will include veterans of the raid that freed over 100 Israelis who were held in the old terminal building at this very airport at Entebbe, as well as some of the hostages. We've been telling you that Netanyahu's brother, Yonatan Yoni, was killed leading the mission, as were three other hostages. A fourth hostage, Dora Block, who was 75 at the time, um, was killed by Idi Amin's henchmen in a hospital in Kampala. Israel is funding the renovation of a wing in the hospital's trauma center. Now, after this airport ceremony, Benjamin Netanyahu will meet with seven other African leaders, namely President Yoweri Museveni, Kenya's President Uhuru Kenyatta, Rwanda's President Paul Kagame, South Sudan President Salva Kiir, Ethiopian Prime Minister Haile Mariam de Selen, Zambia's President will also be present, as will Tanzanian Foreign Minister Augustin Mahiga. Um, we also expect President uh, John Pombe Magufuli to be there as well. Um, before leaving the country on Sunday, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu told his cabinet, and I quote, Israel intends to return to Africa, just as Africa is returning to Israel. Those are the words uh, that he said to his cabinet on Sunday ahead of his visit here. And we're awaiting um, his uh, descent from the plane. We're waiting for him to disembark. Um, the president of uh, Uganda, President Yoweri Museveni and the First Lady Janet are uh, on hand to receive him there. There will be um, that ceremony to commemorate 40 years since the Entebbe raid, um, after which then uh, that meeting will take place with seven heads of state from across the region. talks on business ties and trade between uh, the various countries in the region and Israel. But um, top on the agenda, we imagine, would be the fight against terror, uh, something Israel and many countries in the region know all, all too well. Uh, a number of attacks, including in Kenya just last week, uh, that attack we saw in Mandera on a bus, um, resulting in the deaths of a number of people. Um, and the threat, uh, of course, uh, around the world as well. Um, ISIS claiming responsibility for a number of those attacks uh, in Dhaka, in Paris. Uh, we've seen the same as well as in Brussels. Uh, so they will be discussing uh, cooperation, sharing of information and intelligence, we expect, as well as business ties. Um, uh, we do know that Israel's ties with Africa have been warming up considerably over the last couple of years. Um, so there will be a number of interesting um, events taking place. Netanyahu will spend less than eight hours in Uganda. He will be coming to Nairobi. He'll meet President Kenyatta. He is scheduled to lay a wreath at the grave of uh, the founding father of, uh, uh, of the country, Jomo Kenyatta. Uh, he will also be meeting Kenyan students um, who are leaving to study in Israel. He will be speaking with pro-Israel evangelical Christians. And he will take part in a Kenya-Israel business forum. So like we said, business, uh, of course, will be top on the agenda. About 80 businessmen who are representing 50 Israeli companies are accompanying the Prime Minister on this trip. 
Um, of course, they'll be talking about trade, increasing trade between Israel and African countries. One of the key goals, we understand, is to um, strengthen economic ties. This is according to the Director General of the Prime Minister's Office. Um, currently, in um, the region, just about 2% of Israel's exports come to Africa. This, of course, is what um, Israel is hoping to increase dramatically following this trip. He's accompanied by 80 businessmen representing 50 Israeli companies on this trip. They'll be talking about a number of things, agriculture, energy, and, of course, cyber security. This is what we're hearing from the Prime Minister's office, commercial relations, uh, diplomatic relations as well. And, of course, on Wednesday, he will be going to Kigali from Nairobi. He will visit the memorial site there as well. He will be speaking to victims of the 1994 genocide. He will meet with President Paul Kagame. From there, he will be going to Addis Ababa. In Ethiopia, he's going to meet separately with the President and the Prime Minister. Remember, all of these heads of state will be converging for a meeting later uh, this evening in, um, in Entebbe. In, in Uganda, actually, at the State House. You can see uh, the pictures there of uh, the preparations at the State House. That room is already uh, for them there. Um, and then, of course, we will be visiting these individual countries. Now, of course, um, there has been a little bit of uh, concern in Israel regarding this trip uh, to Africa and how much it's costing the Israeli taxpayers. There were reports that it was going to cost uh, about 20, 28 million um, uh, the office of the Prime Minister clarifying that, saying it will cost about half of that, and that the businessmen who are joining him on this trip will be paying their own way. Once again, 80 businessmen representing 50 Israeli companies coming to Africa, coming uh, to Entebbe and to Kenya and to Addis Ababa and to Rwanda as well. They will be accompanying um, the Prime Minister of Israel, Benjamin Netanyahu, on this trip. Um, and, of course, we know the first, first item on the agenda, the minute he touches down there, the minute he disembarks from that plane, will be a ceremony to commemorate 40 years since that in Tebe raid. The, former, uh, the Prime Minister's uh, elder brother was killed in that raid, leading that. A number of hostages were killed in that as well. This all took place during the reign of uh, former President Idi Amin Dada in Uganda at the time. 40 years ago. So like we've been telling you, this is an historic trip. The last trip made to the continent by a sitting Prime Minister of Israel was 29 years ago. And at that point, the Israeli Prime Minister then visited a number of countries in Western Africa. And on this uh, time around, uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu choosing to visit um, a number of countries in Eastern Africa. Seven heads of state are set to meet him there. They will be discussing a number of issues, uh, trade ties, increasing trade in various sectors. Um, they'll be seeking to strengthen economic ties. Um, some of the areas that uh, will be up for discussion, water technology, agriculture, energy, and cybersecurity. And there we have Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu disembarking from his plane, the first trip by a sitting Israeli Prime Minister after 29 years. This trip comes 40 years after that raid on Entebbe. A number of hostages were killed. Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu losing his elder brother, and there he is being received by the head of state of Uganda, Yoweri Kaguta Museveni, and the First Lady, Janet Museveni. That is happening now. This is live from Entebbe, Uganda, at the Entebbe Airport. These are pictures coming to you right here on KTN News. Our sister station in Uganda, NBS, covering this for you. Solomon Sarwanda is also on hand to do so. This, we know, is historic. Of course, that raid took place um, in June, but it is definitely 40 years since that raid. There will be a ceremony. 
um, to mark that, um, that raid and the, the rescue of the hostages that took place there. Um, I wonder if we can listen in to that as uh, Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu begins his tour of five countries in Africa. about eight hours in Uganda, actually less than eight hours. Like we've told you, um, his itinerary today in Uganda is a ceremony um, to commemorate 40 years since that Entebbe raid that took place uh, during the administration of uh, President Idi Amin Dada. That took place 40 years ago. He's getting a military um, reception there in Uganda at the moment. He will not be going into Kampala, but later on, he is scheduled to meet seven heads of state from the region. Presidents Paul Kagame, Magufuli, President Kir, Ethiopian Prime Minister uh, Haile Mariam Dessalen. Uh, we also have President Uhuru Kenyatta who will be there. We also understand the Zambian head of state um, will be attending uh, that meeting that is set to take place at State House in Uganda a few hours from now, after which he is set to travel um, to Nairobi, Kenya. He will be touching down at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport later on tonight. What is he here for? He's here to increase ties, economic ties, and of course, diplomatic ties between Israel and many countries in the region. Um, he is accompanied by 80 businessmen representing 50 um, businesses in uh, Israel. We understand they're paying their own way to come here. They will be discussing a number of issues, cybersecurity, energy, agriculture. Um, Africa has a lot to learn uh, from, and Kenya indeed has a lot to learn from Israel on just how they're able to do their farming. Uh, you remember the president made a trip, President Uhuru Kenyatta made a trip to Israel not too long ago. We covered that for you. Alex Chamada had that. We also had our Sharma Mani there. Um, and we featured this for you. So we imagine um, a lot to talk about in these various sectors of the economy, commercial relations, diplomatic relations. Uh, so let me give you his itinerary in Africa. He's in, in, in Entebbe now. He will be coming to Nairobi. He will then fly on Wednesday to Rwanda's capital, Kigali. He will visit the memorial site there. He will uh, speak to a number of the victims of the 1994 genocide. He'll also be meeting President Paul Kagame. Eight hours later, he will be flying to Addis Ababa. And then, of course, uh, he's scheduled to return home to Israel on a Friday morning. Um, in Addis Ababa, he'll be speaking with the President and the Prime Minister. He will also address the Ethiopian Parliament and take place in Ethiopian Israeli Business Forum. That's also set to happen here in Kenya and we'll be uh, updating you um, on just what those ties mean, some of the, the, the trade discussions, uh, some of the deals that will be signed and negotiated between Israel and a number of the countries in Africa that he is set to visit. This is what is being termed by Israel as an historic trip to Africa, set to, quote, strengthen Israel's economic security and diplomatic ties with a large number of African countries, the first in the last 29 years of a sitting prime minister of Israel. That, of course, is him there, and he has officially began his historic trip to Africa a five-day visit. He'll be visiting about four countries in the region. And in fact, this is not just about the four countries. They want to uh, strengthen the ties with about 54 countries. Um, that's what they're saying. It has been significant. Um, there have been important implications, um, international alliances, international relations. Um, and uh, this is just uh, that trip that is hoped to expand um, ties between um, various countries in the region and Israel. A 21 gun salute by Ethiopia's defense forces. Let's listen to that.
And uh, let's just take you back 40 years ago to remind you as to why this trip is very historic. 40 years ago, uh, we saw that raid that took place uh, at the old terminal building at the Entebbe airport. And um, the rescue operation um, was led by Netanyahu's very own elder brother, who was later killed in that mission. Um, and uh, that rescue operation freed over 100 Israelis who were held in that old terminal building. There will be a ceremony to mark the 40 years since that raid. It will include veterans of the raid. Um, and also important to note uh, that um, Israel is funding the renovation of a wing at the hospital's trauma unit in Uganda. Um, and of course, after this airport ceremony, he will be meeting the seven other African leaders, as we have been telling you right here on KTN News Desk. All right, so let's speak to Solomon Seranja, a reporter in Uganda, to talk a little bit more about this. All right, Solomon, so here he is. He is finally uh, touched down in Entebbe, Uganda. So, I mean, there's a lot of significance, and I'd like us to focus a little bit on, on, on that Entebbe raid and, and the ceremony that is set to take place uh, in a short while from now. Um, you know, just uh, remind us of this historic event that took place 40 years ago and why this is significant for both Israel and Uganda. Solomon, Saranja, can you hear me? I do hear you, Yvonne. Great, great. Um, uh, I, I don't know if you're able to hear my question. The significance of this visit, the Entebbe raid 40 years ago, him arriving now? Yes, it is very significant. Uh, for uh, Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu to be here because, first of all, his brother was still here, uh, Jonathan Netanyahu, when they came to rescue the Israelis who had been hijacked by a group of Palestinians at the Entebbe International Airport. But, but also, before they arrived at Entebbe, a special team remained at the Jomo Kenyatta International Airport, which, of course, was uh, made, made up of a team of pedics who are supposed to work and operate on people who had been injured during the raid. But significantly about this raid at Entebbe International Airport, the Israel government sent uh, uh, the, the military team to come and rescue uh, the people who had been hijacked. They came in in style because we always call it the 90 days at Entebbe International Airport. It's also called the Operation Thunderbolt. So they came in and then and they took over the airport. Uh, rescued the, the people they had to rescue and then moved out in just 90 minutes. You can imagine back then in 1976, you can imagine the technology they used, and it was a show of might for Israel as a country. But as I, as I earlier on told you, Yvonne, that there is mixed reactions whether indeed we should be able to commemorate the 40th anniversary or to cry as a nation because of the territorial integrity of the nation that was compromised then. Of course, we've had the Deputy Prime Minister, Moses Sali, speaking out against uh, this celebration, saying that as a country, the sovereignty of, of Uganda was compromised when Israel came even without the permission of then the president, Idi Amin Gada. They came and raided the airport and then left. So, like I said, it's mixed reactions, but President Jeremy Seven is actually right now uh, with Benjamin Netanyahu, First national anthems being sung at the Entebbe International Airport, different dignitaries. Just to let you know also, Yvonne, the, the, the Israeli forces took over the Entebbe International Airport security. So you can imagine they're in charge. Uh, and the UPDF, of course, handed over that security to, 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 to Benjamin Netanyahu's team. So it speaks a lot about the security at the Entebbe International Airport here. We know that uh, the different heads of state will be meeting uh, Benjamin Netanyahu later on. I think according to the program, Benjamin Netanyahu is going to be taken around uh, Entebbe International Airport at the place where the raid happened, but also visit those significant places uh, where um, at the Entebbe International Airport, but more so.